Hi everybody, I'm Michael Price and this is for CTV604 uh, Redemptive Film and this is with Professor Andrew Quick and this is my project on film narrative and theological truth. The story, the narrative is everything, it's everything. Uh, behind the cinematography, uh, you're going to have the best lighting in the world, you have special effects, mise-en-scene, uh, editing that's out of this world but what lies underneath all that is the story um and and the thing about the story is you can put into that story any anything you want as the writer um, whatever truth or whatever you want to be fiction um, and the thing is is that you can include allegory which is adding like a spiritual element to your film um, and along with allegory is theological truth and there's different ways to do that um, you can use archetypes, you can use uh, Christ-like figures, you can use um, what, like parables and, and you're symbolizing theological truth and having messages through that. And the, the main thing is, is that, you know, some of the best films, they hit on political issues, uh, social issues, uh, relation issues that we have, be it racism, uh, sexism, all the isms. <laughs> And, and so what I want to look at is how film includes that in the narrative. And we're going to look at some Christian films and some secular films because and both of them alike uh, have these attributes in them. And so it makes them great. With Christian films, the use of theological truth is an obvious necessity. Otherwise, it would not fall into the Christian genre. These are films similar to those by the Kendrick Brothers, such as Facing the Giants, Courageous, War Room, along with films produced by pure flicks such as God's Not Dead, Do You Believe, and The Encounter. A great movie, by the way, if you have not seen that. Earlier Christian films that fell into this vein are ones like The Ten Commandments, uh, King of Kings, A Thief in the Night. All of these films have one thing in common. They have an unapologetic display of the gospel and biblical truth. With these films, theology is blatant and the forefront with which one can take the Bible and read scripture that align with what is displayed on the screen. And so we have movies that directly relate to situations in the Bible. These are all real situations that happen that we can learn from, um, but film, you know, they take these events and they incorporate it into their film. Uh, and if not, they incorporate the theology that surrounds the situation. One of the most fascinating films that has been produced about the resurrection, well, the death of Christ really, is The Passion of the Christ. It's unprecedented. There's, there's not one like it that shows the possibility of what it could have looked like. Um, it is very well shot. The cinematography is incredible. However, it's, the story is straight out of the Bible. I mean, it's you know, it may be on the Catholic side of things, which is fine, you know, the 14 different stations of the cross and, you know, but at the end of the day, that's not what's important. What's important is we can see the brutality of what crucifixion would have looked like, maybe. One particular area of interest um, in Christian film and secular film is the apocalypse. It's, according to Lynn Vaughn and Quick, uh, fundamentalist rallied to the impending judgment on this world and embraced the idea of being rescued from the cataclysms of the last days, leading to the spread of a premillennial and pre-tribulation hope. Linval and Quick, 172. There are a multitude of films centered on this topic that shifted from the Christian viewpoint to even the secular filmmaker's interest in the apocalypse. There are films such as The Omen, uh, the first of the trilogy on the birth and rise of the Antichrist. Authors such as Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins wrote a series of books titled Left Behind, which came out in 1995. They were later adopted to the big screen in 2000, depicting what the rapture could very well look like and the chaos that would potentially follow. The Doomsday film is one that captures the hearts of Christians and non-Christians alike as the possibilities for the destruction of Earth is seemingly recognizable, regardless of belief systems. Aside from Christian films, there are films that directly point to allegory, intentionally. Um, one such film is The Matrix. Um, Neo is a type of Christ. I mean, he dies, he's resurrected. You know, Jesus died, was resurrected. When he resurrected, he had all power. 
was when he saw things differently. He could see in a different realm. It's like Jesus in the spiritual realm. Another saga of films is the Fast and Furious saga. Uh, this is kind of one that probably wouldn't seemingly fit into theological truth. However, it just so happens that Dom has 12 followers in Fast Five. <laughs> He's looked at as a type of Christ, and and Dom's always a step ahead. He you know he has like this this uh, charisma about him. He's able to he's able to draw people. Interesting. He can take people from whatever they were doing and make them want to be on his side. Brian Spilner, uh, he, he's a FBI agent, and he pulls him in. Um, Hobbs, he pulls him in. All right, Ricky, it's right on. It's just like Christ when he went to go find disciples. You know, hey, uh, Peter, come follow me. It's the same thing. Brian, come follow me. When considering the narrative, your characters play a major role throughout the film, from start to finish. For a superhero, they bring salvation to all against an enemy that cannot be beaten with mere human strength, technology, or weapons, similar to that of spiritual warfare. The Bible says in Ephesians 6.12, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly or supernatural places. Along with theological truth, modern films are taking real events from history and including that into their narrative. For example, X-Men First Class. They point to the Holocaust as to where Eric, or Magneto, got his strength from. He was a mutant, but he really it really unlocked when he was separated from his mother. Um, and that was where Magneto was born, as far as the true power. Um, another example is Transformers, Age of Extinction. He alluded to the aliens of Cybertron having landed on Earth during the prehistoric periods of Earth's history. The film contains mechanized dinosaur-like creatures that have supposedly been on Earth for thousands of years in a dormant state. Secular filmmakers have tapped into the unknown and write as if it is known to intrigue the viewer and bring them to a place of questioning. However, at the same time, the allegory within the film that points to theological truth mixed with imaginative concept makes for an incredible narrative and a movie-going experience that is out of this world, if even only on a spiritual level. In conclusion, truth be told, it is kind of difficult to make any film or maybe even a song or a piece of art or anything that doesn't have theological truth. And that's quite simply because, in essence, all the facets of life are covered in the Bible. And the human condition is put out before us like a mirror. And we, you know, we have to make a decision with what are we going to do with this information? Are we going to continue to be the same or are we going to make some changes to ourselves to better this world? And so to that end, all film should be expected to have some theological truth. And it all points to the greatest story ever told. And that's the story of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming down from heaven to die on a cross for our sins, being raised from the dead so that we can be with God for all eternity if we just choose to be with him. Film is a tool to get that story out to the world. Well, I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Uh, I hope, hope it was enlightening and understandable. And you know, hopefully we get out there and we continue that story through the tool of film. <laughs>